Welcome to Riverbend Talon on WBGZ. Brought to you by the Halpin Music Company. Ah, another Thursday night in the Riverbend area. Very good. Oh, where are you at there? You did very oh. good, except for that part. <laughs> except for that part. I think I had the wrong one flipped up. Oh, you it's look very, very lovely today. Oh, you look beautiful today. Yeah. What have you done with yourself? Is this COVID has done you well? That the no, quarantine has done well for COVID. you? No, it's not the COVID. I just realized I'm a negative person. <sighs> Well, I'm going to turn it all around now. <laughs> now I'm bright, sunshiny. It's going to be a bright, sunshiny day, right? Going to be a bright, bright. <laughs> so, uh, so here we are, another Thursday night in the River Bend, and, and uh, we got a, a guest coming up here, Autumn Conkle, who uh, we interviewed her. What was that last week or two weeks ago? I wasn't paying attention. I don't remember either. Time flies by, but. I was surprised, I don't know if you were, when she walked in with a bearded dragon. We're going to talk to her about the bearded dragon, but I was shocked when she walked in with a bearded dragon on her shoulder. So, uh, <laughs> not going to name any names, but someone from the station mentioned to me as I came in, how are we supposed to see a bearded dragon on the radio? Well, there's YouTube. There's this beautiful thing called YouTube. We're, we're, not, we're only going to talk that, about the dragon for a minute. We're also going to talk to Autumn about her musical career. I don't mean to be negative, but that didn't quite go over. <laughs> so I apologize for being negative. <laughs> uh, That's so. my new thing. I'm just going to apologize constantly. I'm so sorry. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, we will be talking to Autumn Conkle uh, and... and uh, about her musical career here shortly, but first uh, we got some career? things going on. Isn't that well, like yeah, multiple no, I years? Know, I yeah. mean, I guess She's she started when there. she was twelve or something. Right? Yeah, I, I'm trying to make it sound grandiose. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you are trying to make it sound grandiose. But you also tried to convince her to put out an album and said it was going to happen, and she didn't seem to agree with that. But. I don't, uh, she's got like 80 songs or something, she said. I don't know. She should have many, many albums out. But Remember what you said about YouTube? It's a YouTube. new generation, man. There it is, man. She's got YouTube videos. She does got YouTube videos. And that and, and it, that's the way the new generation. My kids don't even know what TV is. What's her is. YouTube channel? Uh, Come uh, on, Big on. Ben. I do Meadows yep. Sister. Meadows. Is there an apostrophe after Meadows? No. Just straight through. Now, wait a minute. I don't know. I'm taking a guess on that one, but it's Meadow's sister. Right. You just put the S in there that time. I think, yeah. I think, yeah. So, I, so that would have I, to be an apostrophe. I, don't I know, know you failed English. <sighs> uh, the only thing I know about apostrophe is it was a great Frank Zappa album. That's all I, I wish I would have never listened to Frank Zappa. <laughs> he ruined music for he, you? He did. <laughs> Completely ruined music for me. And I, he's my favorite. I, I, I don't know how else to put that, but it's true. I know exactly, uh, like, there was a time where if it wasn't Frank Zapp and the Mothers, I didn't want to listen to it. There was a time I did that with, with Sun Ra, and, and I did that with several other weird bands. Uh, the Grateful Dead. And, uh, but anyway, uh, what's, what's uh, shaking in the, in the downtown Riverbend area this evening? Well, it's hard to tell. It's like, it really is. I mean, <laughs> right? I, I'm not exaggerating at all because, you know, it depends on where you click. You know what I mean? Right. It, we're still in those times. <laughs> I don't even want to say what they call it because I'm not happy about it, but you know how it is. I don't want to be negative. Anyway, <sighs> sea shanties. Uh, did you guess that one? I bet you guessed that one. I did not guess it. <laughs> That's at Morrison's tonight. Open mic uh, at Raging Cajun, Hollywood Five at Fast Eddie's tonight, Grand Band in Jerseyville at Georgia's Local Brew. Doesn't say Sam, but we know it's Graham. Sam, I am. <laughs> Sam and four. I'm having to do these jokes on my own because Pigpen's frantically working <laughs> on the computer. <laughs> he is uh, so special, and uh, I was just getting the Autumn Conkle seg ready, but it's ready now. Yeah. Adam Gaffney, 6 p.m. at Old Harold Brewery in Collinsville is just a fabulous place. I don't even know. I've never been there. Actually. Never been there either. But it sounds I'm, I'm like a bad. I'm my positive. I like it. It's I'm that, you it know what? It doesn't feel right at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It's bizarro world. I feel like I'm lying. <laughs> 
You what? You don't think it could possibly be a fabulous place? Well, you know, it could be. I've heard it is actually. See, there we go. But Old Harold Brewery in Collinsville, a fabulous place. You've I heard guess it here. if you like beer, you know. Yeah, yeah. Lots of people like beer. Free yeah. beer on Tuesday. Well, I've heard about people that like beer. Uh, we <laughs> kicked a few of them out of the band. Yeah, well, well yeah. they liked it too. They much. liked it a little too much, <laughs> kind of like me and the bidet. I liked it a little. Wait a minute, it was anyway. one of the hardest things though to face an alcoholic and uh, tell him he's got a problem. It's it's hard to face. Uh, I had to go through uh, the uh, what do you call it program to figure out how to do it. You know, because I came be one of those. Uh, what do you call it? Like you're a uh, you're not an alcoholic, but you live with the guy, so you know, like a codependent. Right. right. Yeah, that was happening. Wow. That was right before my brother died. That's that's tough, man. That's and, t- and he was you know, in the same boat. So, yeah. anyways, there you go. Eric Lysot is a very talented musician who's playing. I don't want to be negative. At six p.m. <laughs> at Deutsch Village Inn in Pontoon Beach. <laughs> the new mind. Lysot. That is L Y S A U G H T. Eric Lysot. All right, not Lysol. Like not we Lysol. spray on the microphones <laughs> no. before we start. Right? Uh. And then the pump house is uh, reopening, it says. So That's actually a band, partial reopening. <laughs> is it no, really? It's I not. did it's not, not think so. No. But, but it could very well be in this but day and age. I put it on there because, uh, you know, we've been trying to figure out what's going on. So they actually posted that. Awesome. Yeah, we've been, we've been missing the pump it house. It is They're awesome now that you mention it. That's very positive. There we go. <laughs> ah, the... Friday yeah. night. Yeah, I think Third Shoot's just going straight to DJs for a while. Well, they it, had some bands listed, then they disappear, and then they're back to DJing. So it's probably in this time and ease since they have uh, Tommy doing the Third Shoot, uh, the DJ karaoke uh, circus. It's probably an easy thing to do because if they have to cancel, it's an you know it's just Tommy just goes okay, I'm not going to do it. Uh, but if they, you know, at least they have some music, uh, it's probably hard to get bands in. I don't know, man. It's, these are weird times we're living in. There's two hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico at the mm. same time. It's ah, crazy. Just heard about that. I didn't know. <laughs> Tell me more. Uh, well, one of them has already disintegrated, so that's good. Oh, wow. And the other one is building. Could be a Category 2 before it hits. I don't know if that's if any Was that Tesla's true. laser that they fired at it? To- <laughs> Tell me more, because uh, I really didn't hear about it. Uh, I, I don't watch any news anymore. It's not worth it. I, yeah. I I hate to say this on a station that's website is altondailynews.com, <laughs> but watching the news often makes me feel like I'm involved in every argument on the face of the planet. Right. <laughs> I tune out all that stuff. Uh, and we're supposed to during the show, so I'm just reminding you. There we go. Let's move on. Let's do that. Friday night. That would be night. a positive thing to do. <laughs> The new mantra, positivity. Uh, here we go. Friday night, you already said the DJ Karaoke Circus, the mm. third shoot. Then we got Anthony, Nanny, and Company, 3 to 7 p.m., and then all mixed up, 8 to 12 p.m. at Fast Eddie's Bone Air. I'm going to guess that that's supposed to say 8 to 11 now because I think they got to close at 11, but I don't know. I'm just guessing. The rules are different every 10 so minutes. So before you do a heavy metal show, how do you get yourself psyched up to go out there and just lose your freaking mind like I do? I don't lose my mind like you do. So I'm just saying, you've seen do. what I do, and people say I lose my mind. Yeah. Uh, so how do you get psyched up for that? I don't know. How do you? There's a way. I'm not going to tell you, though. <laughs> I just wanted to see if you knew. Anyways, Anthony Nanny and company, 3 to 7, and all mixed up at uh, Fast Eddie's from 8 to 12. Uh, if you heard me over Pigpen's brilliant laughter, beautiful laughter there. Miles Cameron, he's in the Cops Band, which actually had a different name this time when I seen it. It was like Cops Undercover. Hmm. Crazy. So how can you be a? How can you announce you're undercover? You're not really undercover then, right? <laughs> that is not very undercover. No. Hey, look, there goes those undercover guys. But I'm sure he's very talented. Yeah. Have uh, you ever seen that band, the I, police tribute band? I have not, but I'm assuming if they change their name from the cops, it's because another band already has that name and contacted them and told them. Either that, that or they're not good to be named after these days, depending on where you're at, right? That could be. Yeah. I got yeah. So now they're undercover cops. The, the cops undercover. There you yeah. go. NWA, they... They had something about cops, didn't they? 
I saw Ice I Cube perform that. <laughs> I saw him perform that. Was like the that. 80s, right? It, I, it was on the uh, Family Values tour with like Corn and Limp Biscuit and all that when I was. I don't think many bands have songs about the police. That, yeah, he, that, you, know, you should have seen the nervous back security back then. <laughs> <laughs> As that song got played and the crowd was all screaming along. Yeah. Miles Cameron guys. is the guy we're talking about at Shea yeah. Maryland's APM, not. NWA, but that would be an awesome show to see. <laughs> NWA at Shea Maryland tonight. Oh hey, my gosh. You know, <laughs> we got to do it somewhere in town. They won't let us use the amphitheater. It's, so. it, right. It's going to be sold out at Shea, outdoor at Shea Maryland, though, right. so there's more room. <laughs> uh, uh, we got um, somebody's going to be at Hiram's Bar, but we don't know who. You got well, it's, it's a big guess. I, I keep that there to remind me to keep checking. They're new, right. and I don't want to forget to check right. them. So anytime I don't put anything in there, I had mentioned to you once before that you know to skip past. Right. Them. I forgot. Oh my gosh! I, I cold read this. I, yeah, I'm so no, unprofessional. No, no, no. Uh, we got Hooky Hooky 7 p.m. at Baker's. We're talking about hell. Friday night because we're talking know, about Friday really August 28th. Confusing people probably, which we always do. More, I think more so than normal, maybe. I maybe, don't know. Maybe. <laughs> uh, we switch sides of the room, so it, everything's backwards. Everything is weird tonight. I've been thinking about doing a laugh, but it's going to come off fake. <laughs> See, I don't Unlike know. yours, and and you've told me many times I can't stand listening to those people on the radio. They're a fake laugh. <laughs> but here I am all the night. I, I wouldn't want to disappoint you. Uh, no, I. That would be negative. That would be fine. I'm a giggling fool. Okay. I giggle my life away. So were uh, you talking about hooky? Yeah, hooky. The hooky monster. At Baker's and Hale Friday night. Dang right. Go get some kick booty food from Baker's and Hale farmed uh, table food at Baker's and Hale, and check out hooky at 7 p.m. on Friday evening. We also got Darien Rowe, 6 p.m. at Recess Brewing in Edwardsville. That was your best subject in uh, grade school, wasn't it? Recess? Recess. (laughs) I made all A's in recess. I'm assuming that's why they named uh, that that place. That, I mean, recess was awesome. Yeah. Why not name a club recess? That, that, that means awesome. like you're not at school. Right. right. You can play hooky at recess. See, they need to hire hooky, and you, you can get to play lose hooky your at recess. You get to just go crazy for like, <laughs> was it like four or five minutes, but it seemed like forever. I think it was like 20 minutes, oh, it okay. seemed like. I don't know, man. Maybe, I, I, maybe yeah. first hour. I don't know. Yeah, I man, I... I yeah, don't try that. to think back that far. We'll be here forever. Do, 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 Acoustic do, do, DNA, do, do. 6 to 10 at Bella Vista Winery in Maryville on Friday. Also, Lanny and Julie at the Cabin at Judy Creek in Glen Carbon. The Doc Holiday Band at Deutsch Village Inn in Pontoon Beach. Backwards, Backwoods Burden, 7 to 10 at George's Local Brew in Jerseyville. And uh, the Loading Dock had a cancellation. Hmm. I'm not sure if that means they got somebody else lined up yet, but yeah. So I'm not sure. A lot of stuff canceling these days. Yeah. It's hard to. Yeah. It's all touch and go, as they say. Yeah, that's why we put all the links at uh, a website nearby. Cottonmouth.org. Org. Yeah. org. That's it. Uh, yeah, you go to cottonmouth.org when you're, especially like when you're out cruising on the weekends and looking for the place to go. That is probably the uh, an easy site because uh, uh, Dennis puts all this stuff up in order and he puts links to them so you can check and see if that's actually still happening or has been Thank canceled. Thank you so much for the compliment. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. very positive. Every hey, every week you do this, you do a good job. Oh, don't let you. nobody tell you different. Well, people have. Well, they don't know what they're you talking about. You got that wrong. You d- they don't know. They don't know. Yeah, the, I know. The truth know, is, man. it got it got changed, and right, it, no one told right, me. Right. <laughs> Although but, I do get quite a few wrong too. Well, because you know, last year I was doing this at like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Because I was working three jobs. Right. Right. Yeah. Like a hundred and twenty hours a week. And, and you and still I was managed supposed to, to be out. positive during that time. It was really hard. Oh yeah. yeah I didn't have any recesses. Yeah, well, you got you should have played hooky then. Yeah. Well, it only lasted for a while, and boy, am I glad uh, I made it to this point because it yeah. paid off in the end. But man, it was there not easy. Go. All right, so backwoods burdens seven to ten at George's local brew. I said that already. Now we're on to Saturday. Yeah, we're on to Saturday, August 29th. How long is this interview? Uh, this interview is a 35 minute interview. So right, and that's with who? Go. It, it is with Autumn Conkle right. and Suki, the bearded dragon, who Suki won't say anything, but we'll, we'll, we'll learn some interesting facts about now, bearded dragons. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Okay. This is going to be a real tough question. Oh, man, I hate these. I don't mean to be negative, but why is Autumn Conkle on the show? 
because she is playing at Framley Fest now here. Now we're getting and, somewhere. And uh, there aren't... There, uh, what I, is Framley Fest? Framley Fest is a festival that is ha- music and art festival happening. This year it's moving down to Benton, Illinois. Right. It is on Labor Day weekend. Right. Three days of music and, and vendors and fun with your family. It's on a 40-acre venue. Hopefully everyone's going to be nice and socially distanced, but listen to some nice live music. And Autumn is kind enough to play two sets. She will be playing uh, on Friday and on Sunday at Framley Where's Fest. Where's that at? Benton, Illinois, a place called Camp Manitoba. And it is a summer camp for kids that has all mm. kinds of crazy stuff. Rock climbing walls and zip lines and a lake with some canoes. And Do they get them and... roped off or can you use them? No, I think during certain hours they're going to have them staffed. Oh. Uh, not It won't be 24 uh, hours a day, but during certain hours in the morning hours they're going to have them staffed where they will be open and people will be there to help lock you into the zip line. And oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not I'm doing not that locked either. into anything. That's always trouble. I got I, locked into the Navy once for four years. <laughs> I tried to get out, but man, the stuff you have to do to get out was not worth it. <laughs> I know people who did it. I, oh, man. Oh, geez. They're still in institutions as a matter of fact oh my gosh i i got locked into a bad cell phone contract and i had to do some horrible stuff to get out of that too (laughs) the people at that cell phone company were not gentle you know what i didn't get locked into what did you get locked in and for those 18 eight tracks for a penny from Columbia Records. <laughs> Wasn't it Columbia House? Right, Columbia House. Yeah. They're still after me. I don't even know if it was 18, but it was a lot. Right. Like 10 or so, at least. Right. Uh, uh, everybody wanted to get those uh, 12, 14 Somebody albums Somebody told me if they penny. send you something, you get to keep it. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't sound right, but I was going with it. As you know? a kid, we all believed that. Yeah. Do you remember people oh, yeah. saying that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, here it is 30 years later, and Columbia House lawyers are still calling me. Yeah. <laughs> it seems here you took some Elton John tapes. <laughs> I know what they can't feed me. I'll tell you who's calling me is Napster. Remember them? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about Napster. <laughs> that, that was a uh, a golden moment in time where you could yeah. just kind of like listen to anything. Oh, you can still do it, but man, are they a little tougher? But yeah, yeah well, you can do it. You can do it. Lars you, Ulrich. You gotta, that's who we have to you thank. Gotta for stay, that. Uh, you got to stay on it. But uh, get you a VPN. That and, helps. And look, I, I get that when that when when uh, I, you know I feel for for the bands that are out there playing clubs and playing these little rickety tours and not. Saying Selling albums and making, but these these bands that sold millions of albums like Metallica, right. dude, come on, shut up and, and spend your money and let people listen to your music. Well, you know, <laughs> since they were the one at the center of all that, what I find most ironic about that now that you bring it up, and I don't mean to be negative, <laughs> but when Metallica started, they got discovered by making up cassettes and giving, and them, giving them away. Giving, yeah. Yeah. That's just so ironic. Yeah, yeah. Not negative, ironic. A Ironing. Little different. <laughs> Ironing. I ironed the oh, shirt that's... earlier. And... It looks good. It's a 33 on the needle shirt. Well, thank you for that yeah. compliment, it's Mr. Beautiful. Pigpen. Yeah, looking You're good. a very glorious person. <laughs> Not really, but thank you. Hey, let's do Saturday. Yeah. What's going on Saturday? Well, I don't know. All right, we got World Beat Curbside Concert. That's going on with Raw Earth. Read it all. Come on. Justin Ra. Two Cities, One World. Ben von ha- Ben von Harz, uh, Doug Foschner, Casting Ruins, uh, Ru- Ru- Casting Ruins. <laughs> I don't even know how to say that one. Chris Otto. I think it might be Ooh. Runs. But, uh, there it is. Casting Runs. <laughs> that was <laughs> a lot no to read. Eye in there, but, uh, is there? I, my eyes are deceiving. That was a me. copy paste too. So I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's right. I think it's right. There you go. And Chris Otto. All of that is happening. From 12 to 8 p.m. at the Pocket Park next to Jacoby's, and it, it is a, a curbside concert. Only, so I'm like, not sure exactly. Yeah, it's what it weird. There's like they can have like 25 people or something, and okay. they're going to have to spread out in Pocket yeah. Park, which isn't a lot of room. It's not a lot of room. It's, so I'm thinking if you're like the 27th person, yeah. You're like, Hard to you find can't a spot. stand on the street. You right. can't, you know, so you're going to have to leave, I guess. Yeah, that's going to be tough. I would go across the uh, road to Golden Road Organics. Ah, I'd right there. Do a little I'd be shopping. Like, hey, you guys, what's yeah. going on? I'm I'm shopping right now. Sure, I can hear the music. Sure, so, it's nice to do that while I'm shopping. So my plants are are I got got a little yellowing going on. Is that low? Is that low nitrogen or am I overwatering? Pee on them. You'll be fine. <laughs> 
chicken poop, chicken poop, chicken poop. No, I have that nitrogen. Uh, little, little chicken poop always raises the nitrogen on your plants. Who's little, at Shea Maryland Saturday Hey, night? Shea Maryland's got Trailer Park Hero. <laughs> I like it. Right. Trailer Park Hero, 8 p.m. at Shea, Maryland. That's the first time I've heard that that name. I like it. DJ again at uh, Third Shoot, and then Borderline at uh, Fast Days at 3, all mixed up at 8. There we go. Saturday. Two-piece, two 7 p.m. at Baker's and Hale in Godfrey, Illinois. Dana Anderson, 7 to 10 at Georgia's Local Brew. The Intrusion, 6 p.m. at Rustic Retreats Gold Bar in Grafton. Now, The Intrusion, I told you they're coming on strong. Yeah. That's uh, that's Jacob Poland, I think. In that, it band, is, right? it yeah. is, yeah. I, I haven't heard anything about uh, inner or what was the accidentally on purpose. Right. The other band, I yeah. haven't heard much from them. But intrusion, and and there's a fella out there. I I, I know him uh, uh, through Facebook, and I think I've met him a few times. Named Mark Rice, who just keeps posting intrusion stuff, sending me uh, invites to all of their stuff. See? So that's I don't called... know if he's their manager or what. But hey, you're doing a good job, Mark. You are really spreading the love. Yes, he should be part of Framley Fest next next year because you know at least one of the bands is going to work hard. Yeah, right off the bat yeah, because you see that stuff, and as a promoter, you're like, "Hey, this is the kind of guys we would need on the team." Yeah, I am seeing the name Intrusion popping up. You know what? It's an intrusion what they're doing. It really is. Yeah, I don't think they're out of high school yet. All of them. No, I don't think most of them are. They all all fairly. But you know young how many guys. guys we interviewed from the '70s that told us they were playing in bars in high school, and we were like, "Huh? How'd that happen?" Yeah, right. And and I it, know you were running sound. Yeah, doing, or lights. doing lights. Yeah, lights. doing lights. Yeah, you weren't good enough to run sound. No, I was no. not. And that guy I, I still was not good enough. That guy would not let you touch his board. I'm sure. <laughs> not like 15, right? Please step away from the soundboard, sir. What do you Get do when like light a board. 14 year old walks up to you? At a show and says, "Can I turn some knobs?" Yeah, you know, <laughs> you don't. I, I, I was, I was lucky enough as it's a computers as computers now though, so you could probably make them like they think they're turning it, but they're not. Right? The uh, well, so so the guy who ran lights for Happy Trails and he ran late lights for. Uh, um, down at Sneaky Pete show, uh, Schwegel, Luke Schwegel. He was only 15 when he was doing that, running right. his own light show. Right, he was amazing. That, that was impressive because I did lights at 15, but it was somebody else's light show that I had to rent, and they had to train me how to do it. And he, man, he, the kid's good. The kid's good. I'll tell you what's good. What's that? It's fabulous. A past guest on the show. I don't, I don't know if you were with us then. No, I was not. It you was wasn't? right before. It was right before. I was going to say, it was close. Yeah, it was right before. Great organization, though. Yeah. Bikers Against Autism. They're having their run this weekend, and uh, it'll be uh, taking place from the hog pit. I think it starts at noon, the run. Right. Uh, and I think registration's like at 11, so if you're into that thing. But I know Tripwire's playing. From 3 to sure. 7. Yeah, yeah, at the uh, hog pit in Grafton. So Followed by Great comedy. Cause. Followed by comedy night at Grafton Winery. Oh, wait a minute. You right? skipped down. Oh, I'm so, oh did I? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. oh yeah, well, you're right. I skipped a whole slide. It's, it's, I don't mean to be. Thing. I don't it's mean to thing. be negative. That's not negative. That's correct. That was well. That's correct. Sometimes I uh, thought I was correcting, uh, but yeah, uh, it turned out just, I was being negative. Well, you so. just never know, do yep, you? So I'm trying there to watch out for all of them now. There you go. Bikers Against Autism. Should with I be trip wearing wire. a mask? I'm starting to think maybe I should start doing things better I don't too. Know. I, I've been doing it wrong, so I don't know. Should I read the Bible? Would that help? I don't know. If it helps, you, have you it don't have many answers. If it, I, I probably I am, shouldn't be asking you for advice. I am no. That guru. would be the first thing to do, right? Yeah. Find a better guru. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am no guru. Bikers Against Autism Talk with Trip Wire. You ever hear that song by Strawberry Alarm, Alarm Clock? I do not know that one. I know Man. a little Strawberry Alarm Clock, but not that one. Uh, who's the guitar player from Strawberry Alarm Clock? He went on to be with Leonard Skinner. He just recently passed. That's ah, right. There you go. To, I had to say it real slow while the tumbles, right. the tumblers fell into place. That's just odd to me. The Laurel Canyon psychedelic band to the Southern, to the Southern rock, rock Band. Greatest Southern Rock yeah, Band of maybe all of time. all time. Yeah. yeah. All the brothers, uh, all the brothers I think. can argue, I think, but I think you know, the they brothers. Yeah, put them more in the hippie category because you know they can do that too. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you know, Southern Rock to me was Leonard Skinner going, "We're having a party and a bonfire and drinking beer." That's, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, when you right. listen to their songs, that's what you feel like yeah. you're hanging out with them, doing that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess Allman Brothers did lean a little in more for the psychedelic. Or I don't in, know. In, for swamp, sure in a swamp, 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 swamp music. It's the Swampers, Daddy. Yeah. Whew. Heck good yeah. stuff. 
So there you go. Uh, hey, also on Saturday I'm night. I'm doing the singing over here. Do you notice that? I you usually that. sing. Now, I'm I, in this I, chair, so I'm going to sing. I like it. I, I'm digging it, man. Okay. So Saturday night. Uh, a compliment. This Saturday you. night. Uh, Big George, Brock Jr. and the NGK Band, 3 to 7 p.m., Followed by the comedy night. That's at the Grafton Wine. Yeah, that's what was you're the trying one. to talk about. Yeah, yeah, I skipped down. I well, don't know. Well, you cannot skip Big George Brock Jr. That's very difficult. <laughs> no, man. He is a big man. And he is not one I want to skip. I want to see him every time. He's one of them guys, and you're walking through the parking lot, and you notice him driving up to you. Oh, yeah. That's All happened. Right. Heck that's yeah. That's happened to you. <laughs> I like Big George. Yeah. He's awesome. He is. We got the Truckers, 6 p.m. at the loading dock. Right. And then Tanglefoot. 6 to 10 p.m. at Wild Pickens all on Saturday, Saturday night. Mm-hmm. I'm letting you ride off some. All right, here we go. There you go. Jonathan Baker, 3 to 7 p.m. at Michael Rose's Cabana Bar in Portage de Sioux, Missouri. We got Dale Papp, 6 p.m. at Houdats in Collinsville. Uh, Doc Holiday, 6 p.m. at Deutz Village Inn in Pontoon Beach. And then Roaming Home, 6 to 10 p.m. at Bella Vista Winery in Maryville. That is your Saturday evening in the Riverbend area. It's all Sunday. That's all Saturday. And now we move on to Sunday. There we go. Mm-hmm. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Nick Sickmeyer and Company, 1 to 5 p.m. And then Borderline, 6 to 10 p.m. at Fast Eddie's Big Fun in Alton, Illinois. Jake Weber and the Lonesome Drifters. There's a past guest. There you go. They're playing at Shea Maryland's on Sunday. I didn't write down the time. You'll have to follow the link there at you know. cottonmouth.org. Got Led Sled, also a past guest, 3 also, p.m. at Aries Winery. We also put these uh, this list in the uh, comments section of the uh, YouTube video we put out. Yeah. So, so if you don't want to you know, bother with going to another website. But the problem is there's no links there. Well, yeah, that that's would be very. Go, that would take me forever to put all those and in. That's why you go to the website. So there you go. Or you can see where you can get tickets for Framley Fest. I mean, that probably be something you should mention. Framleyfest.com. dot <laughs> uh, yeah. com. So so you can go there and you know there's FramleyFest.com, dot com. But while you're at Cottonmouth dot org, if you forgot what the name of that festival's website was, it's going to be there. Right there. It's going to be there. There you go. Uh, Along with videos from there, right? That's I all believe, on there, too. I believe there are videos mm-hmm. from there. I believe there are uh, all the videos from our show, videos from Happy Rock Trails, the Hops. videos from Rock the Hops. Yeah. There's videos from every festival yeah. that happens around here, just mm-hmm. about. So you guys do a, a fabulous job. No, uh, Alex does all that. Well, uh, I just, I've seen you helping out. I just out. update links. I've seen you helping out. I've seen you moving cameras before. Well, I act like I'm doing something. So <laughs> You can't do that. That's my gig. <laughs> Where do you think I learned it? That's why I'm trying I, to make you my, my guru. S- you've, you've showed me this fabulous way to <laughs> trick people into thinking you're an amazing person when really you're not doing anything. You're really, just, just standing there like talking. Hey, right. And, uh, telling stories. Yeah. Telling stories. Hey, it's, I told all my stories back in the early 90s, and uh, most of my friends around me were tired of hearing them after a while. Yeah. You, you know, know, all those those stories about overseas. You got to tell. <laughs> You got to update them, man. That's what I do. I just well, keep, I keep rewriting my stories. It doesn't matter if they're true. It's all about getting a laugh. Oh, okay. That's my problem. I keep speaking the truth, man. Yeah. Do yeah. I love speaking the truth? <sighs> man, I, 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 I. Just hey, people make are sh- different. I just make shit up realized. as I go along. People, people are, are different. different. Oh my no god. No way. I thought we were all the same. Yeah. We all wore masks. It's crazy. We no, all- <laughs> wait, no. We all don't wear masks. Oh no. I'm confused again. All right, back to the list. I'm confused too. So Sunday, August thirtieth. The Vault, six to t- uh, 2 to 6 p.m. at the Grafton Winery. And then there will be an intrusion. Once again, the, oh. intru- <laughs> the intrusion, 2 p.m. at the Hog Pit in Grafton, That's Illinois. That's on Sunday. That is on Sunday. The Yacht Rockers, 3 p.m. at the Loading Dock in Grafton. Ooh, I like this one. Naughty and nice. Mm-hmm. They will both be <laughs> performing at Wild Pickens Set. in Chesterfield. It's always been my approach. I try to be negative and positive. Naughty and nice. See, I like it. It didn't, went o- it didn't go over. Well, you it just never know. It didn't go over. Uh, That's a Libra thing. Do you know that? I did not know That's that. That's why we have the symbol of the scales. Ah, we try to weigh out what? both sides and figure out what's going yeah, on. Yeah. But sometimes we don't speak right. And it comes off to you could leave out one word, boy, you're in trouble. <laughs> if we left out the Graham band playing at 2 p.m. at the Oyster well, Bar and Grafton, we would be in trouble. In that would come case, down if you like, left out the marshmallows and the chocolate, 
I, and you I wouldn't have s'mores. You wouldn't have s'mores, right. but but you'd have Graham, and right. that that's the Graham band. Graham band at the Oyster Bar in Grafton on Sunday. I'd like to eat some PM. catfish. What kind of catfish? Catfish Willie. <laughs> catfish Willie's going to be 3 to 7 p.m. at Mike LaRosa's Cabana Bar in Portage de Sioux. Check this out. See how I got two links on this one? I do. I do. That's because it, it, it blew my mind when I seen this. It says Scott and Michelle, 6 p.m. at Miner's Theater in Collinsville. You know where Miner's Theater is? Do you know anything about Miner's Theater? I, I, is that the theater kind of right in the middle of town by this close to the square? There, there's one theater I've been to in Collinsville. From like 1916 or 18. Oh, man. Right? This thing's an old, old wow. building. They spent years like trying to refurb it. They used it, you know. For stuff we probably shouldn't talk about. I no, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was wow. fake news. All right. Well, you know, I was thinking of Masons for a yeah. minute, so uh, I don't yeah. know. I you know, I don't know. I got the secret chain handshake. But, yeah, so it was it was one of them kind of places for miners. Actually, it was yeah. like a uh, labor hall. Anyways, uh, the reason I I stopped when I seen them, I'm like I've never heard of Miners Theater. It, there's a new venue. Yeah, and I'm like, that's an then old I went venue. and looked. It's like 1918. I'm like, oops. It, it, old venue. Good thing I brought that to my attention. There you go. And that's it. There you go. Is that Is our it? Sunday? I don't know. Oh, well, we got. Oh, se- nope, we got eight uh, four. There we go. We got uh, Sarah Gallagher, 5:30 p.m. at Old Harold's Brewery in Collinsville. Rick Schroeder, which that was the kid on Silver Spoons, right? I think so. Uh, Ricky Schroeder, uh, different Rick Schroeder, probably. Rick Schroeder, two p.m. Uh, that's at, him. It's <laughs> this is the yeah, this is him. That's right. Deutsch Village uh, Inn, Pontoon Deutsch. Beach. Race down there and get his autograph. <laughs> two p.m. It's tell a, him I heard on the radio you're the guy from Silver Spoons, <laughs> right? And tell him all about us. We don't uh, mind. It is a little known fact that little known fact is going to be two to six p.m. at Bella Vistri. Vista Winery. Mm. There we go. Bella Vista Winery in Maryville. So there, right. that's our Sunday, Sunday, Jeez. Sunday. We went too far, but so. that's okay. That's my fault. <laughs> it's my fault. Totally my fault. Ricky Schroeder? Oh, that's too far. You can't talk bad about him. No, He no, was Silver Spoons. No. I'm, I'm staying positive here. Staying positive. The most positive thing I can mention right now is our sponsors. All right, let's do my that. Alpha Music Company and Mr. Matt Van Voorst and Macias Insurance, who have stuck with my negative butt. <laughs> now for about four years only my butt's negative the rest of the it's rest perfect. of it's okay but, but that one part man <laughs> well it's the kind of that that spot right right behind your knee oh yeah you know that little like if you bend it there it kind of you know a little pocket yeah a little pocket that, in there that, yeah that's the negative spot huh sometimes the energy's that's all flowing bad for some reason there, i feel it you right? should see a doctor you know i didn't take my turmeric maybe is what i started ah, thinking i'm like no i think that's yeah. a negative knee I, a negative knee. <laughs> okay. That is a negative yeah. knee. All right. Well, we will be back with Autumn Conkle after these massages. River Van Talent on the Big Z, brought to you by Mr. Matt Van Voorhis of Macias Insurance and by the Halfa Music Company. And uh, we've got reptilians in the house. <laughs> no, it's, it just got real, man. It's a it real reptile. Real a here. real reptile, I should say. We uh, the Suki, the bearded dragon, is the real reptile that he's speaking of. However, Suki <laughs> was not supposed to be our guest on the show. <laughs> Autumn Conkle is our okay. guest on the show. Suki the Bearded Dragon is her backup, her, her protection, now as she walks these mean streets of Alton. <laughs> uh, hello, Autumn. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, and and how is Suki doing on your shoulder there? She's doing pretty good, too. Her beard's pretty bright, so she's having a good time. That's cool. A, a bright beard is a good time? Yeah. Uh, you, were, you were talking when I walked in the room, you were talking to Dennis about how Suki's colors will change according to the temperature or her yeah. mood. So mm-hmm. you can actually look yeah. at her and see if she's in a good mood by her colors. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. We had the that, top of her head, especially. We had that sound therapist in uh, right before Suki yeah. came in, so maybe the tones like got her super relaxed. Could be, could be. I, I'm still uh-huh. feeling pretty relaxed. I'm feeling that, pretty so. relaxed. Now, now this is the thing. Anybody listening right now who who doesn't know Autumn Conkle is like. Oh, this must be like Jack Hare's Wild Adventure. They're going to have some animals, some monkeys and stuff in on it. No, <laughs> no, right. no. No, this is Riverbend Talent. This is Riverbend Talent. <laughs> Autumn Conkle is a musician, and she writes fabulous songs and has this, such the prettiest, cute little voice. You you, you remind me, oh, God dang, I can't, I, 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 uh, Ira, oh, she sings with John Prine all the time, and I, and I suddenly forgot her name, but when I hear you sing, I think of her, Ira. 
it'll come to me when I quit thinking about it. But before we get on to your, your musical talent, let's talk a little bit more about Suki <laughs> because that's all I'm looking at. This, this is a, just for the people who are, uh, if you're watching video, you can see it. If you're listening on the radio, this is the thing that got me about, about Suki, that the bearded dragon that is sitting on Autumn's shoulder. Suki's coming your way, man. Uh, <laughs> Turn it around. She, she, she's got a <laughs> leash on Suki because while uh, Suki, she, you say she's cold blooded, yeah. so so doesn't move a lot, but can move really fast. When oh, she needs very to. quickly. It's honestly when she's eating crickets, it's like you you can tell she's a predator. She's she's on it. She's on it. <laughs> so so uh, what I noticed about it though that really struck me was that the leash has like this leather harness with. Ho- arm holes through. it looks like a little leather jacket oh, yeah right um i originally made her a harness <laughs> out of like some cloth i just had two layers of cloth and i like sewed it but it was a little bit big on her and it i i realized i needed something that was thin but durable that would like fit snug so she would be able to like run around if she wanted to right because she could slip out of the other one a lot easier so i just like grabbed a pleather boot and you know cut it up a little bit <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe you got it off an old G.I. Joe or something. You no, know? <laughs> I, I was picturing like a, a Tonto doll or like right. the Lone Ranger and Tonto or something. I had some old boots that were like a little messed up. So I was like, you know, I'll just cut a piece out, see if it'll work. And it ended up working pretty well. I thought of another question I'm dying to ask. Uh, is is she like a mood ring? So like if you're in a certain mood, does she change colors? Because uh, she's no, like, her t- colors just change. But yeah, mostly just to her mood. It's okay. pretty subtle generally. And if like I didn't, I didn't even know that until somebody mentioned it to me that right. they do do that. And they right. were like, t- "Have you noticed she changed color?" Do do. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, have you noticed that she cha- her changing color? I was like, honestly, yeah. I just thought I was crazy. Okay. <laughs> Because yeah, her back for sure does get darker, when, and like um, as you can see, she's got a little some darker like blacker scales. A lot of times that'll get dar- like deeper, darker black yeah. when she's cold, and then her head, like the top of her head and her um, beard, both get a lot oranger when she's like in a good mood and stimulated and stuff. Well, you'll see animals react to uh, in their owner's you know mood. A mm-hmm. lot of times a dog will do that. So Absolutely. I wondered yeah. if maybe you know because. She's think, around you constantly. Um, yeah, so. moods. Of, I think my mood probably affects hers to an extent, most likely, because she again is. Uh, she they very they like feeling vibrations a right. lot, so they often like will feel like they feel your like breathing and mm. your vo- and your vocal vibration and like your heartbeat and stuff, and that's why they like to lay on your chest or on like even my back a lot of the time. Like I lean forward a lot, like if I'm sitting down, so she'll crawl all the way around and just lay <laughs> down my spine. Because that's another place where she can get the like vibration. optimal vibrations. Yeah. You were right about the sound bath. I told the you. vibrations <laughs> that were hanging out in the room from the sound bath <laughs> I know. affected the mm-hmm. Suki, the bearded dragon. Or as you said in in that interview, how you used to lay your head on the uh, what was it the, the drive motor. shaft? <laughs> yeah, the, the motor, <laughs> the motor of the van. I, I, whatever, I loved it, man. Yeah. Uh, so so here here's another thing. Before we move on from Suki, we will talk about your music. I <laughs> promise. <laughs> we're not gonna. But you brought this very interesting thing in that we can't quit The first at. bearded dragon we've ever had on the yeah. show. <laughs> yeah, it is the first bearded dragon on our show for I sure. Took, I took an unplanned nap, so I needed to get her out for at least a bit. <laughs> uh, now, you, you you had mentioned earlier, Suki likes to mainly eat. Uh, 90% of the diet is fruits uh, and vegetables. It's like 70 percent. Seventy percent yeah. of her diet is fruits and vegetables. That seems uh, weird for a desert dwelling animal. I know, right? Yeah, like I agree. where in the where in the desert do they get their fruits and vegetables at the local stand? Um, I think they probably mostly eat more vegetables, and I think like cactuses and different bushes have wow, fruits. Wow, yeah, I can see that. And cactus. since they le- eat a lot of like leafy greens, mostly like they can eat other vegetables, um, but they eat a lot of leafy greens. And I'd assume they probably developed over time just being domesticated mm-hmm. right. to have a more broad diet. I would assume. I'm that, not well, sure. Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. Well, and I could totally picture uh, Suki chomping on a cacti. Yeah, you know that, but but like peyote. Uh, right, absolutely, <laughs> El mescalito, uh, San Pedro. Uh, yeah, anyway, all all the good Le cacti. Four, four, the winds, I. <laughs> all the best of the cacti. <laughs> we're not talking just some Christmas cactus here. Uh, we're talking <laughs> the good ones. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry, we spun off the rails here again. <laughs> I don't know what we were talking about now. We were talking about how you like to 
do peyote and listen to Autumn Conkle's music. I, I love to do that. And, and, <laughs> and I keep looking over at Autumn to ask her a question about her music, and I see Suki. <laughs> and now at this moment, I picture Suki up at Pearson's Market going, I want some blueberries <laughs> and uh, some, some collard Not greens. Suki. Suki don't like blueberries. No, nah, that's right. Suki don't like blueberries. <laughs> Any, anyway... Uh, I do like to eat uh, the Lafora Lafora with the Whimsy <laughs> and listen to Autumn's songs. <laughs> and uh, she, she has a, a song I can't say the name of it, but it's uh, "Blank You." And uh, yeah, that was in uh, the Trinity don't River even Fest. Remember what the actual title of the song is? <laughs> um, at, oh. Can we say it? Fill in the blanks. That's what it's called. Okay. Because I don't actually say I don't actually say it. That's right. right. I, it's, it's a blank spot, but we can fill it in in our mind. a lot of my songs may have cuss words. <laughs> <laughs> Just for emphasis. That one doesn't. Is that the... Well, uh, it has to... Doesn't, not in the actual chorus, but in the verses it does. Yeah, see. Is that the song that's in the Trinity River Fest movie that we did? I think it is. I think it is. We've been one. talking about it ever since yeah, then. I well, I, I actually... I saw her play it... Many, many moons ago in a backyard campfire right. setting o- over at uh, April's house. I don't know how. You you showed up, and you started just, you were pretty young at the time. I and you just started pulling instruments 13. out of. You just started pulling crazy ukuleles and man. You started pulling yeah. instruments out. And I'm like, I didn't even know to bring instruments. Like, I usually, <laughs> I'm the guy telling everyone bring instruments, right? And she sat and played some songs that just put a smile on my face yeah. that night. Yeah. Uh, so in, anyway, uh, you you uh, you've been writing songs. How long have you been writing songs now? Uh, again, since I was like twelve or thirteen. Twelve, thirteen. I was gonna say you were. You were I've been trying young. to at least. <laughs> I think you're doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you, you I, I, we we read your name where you're uh, down at the Brew House and and at different places around town every mm-hmm. now and again. Uh, how long have you been? Once you started writing, how long was it before you decided? I'm going to go play these songs uh, for other people. Well, I'd say I the first open mic I ever went to was Mavis used to have open mics. Wow. For a short time, for maybe a year or so, they had open mics. And those are the ones that I'd go to. Like They'd have them like once a month. Right. So I'd play there. So that was at first. And then for a while, I just didn't go to any open mics. And I, I The first festival I ever played at was like my, somebody I know somebody one of their friends they worked at like a wildlife sanctuary kind of place and there was they were having a monarch butterfly festival kind of thing oh, nice. with just like a bunch of vendors and just like educational stuff and all that and they were like hey do you want to play for an hour and i was like sure heck yeah i think that was when i was 14 nice and then nice. for a long time i just didn't play anywhere until germania started doing open mics and i go there every week like when they're up and running obviously right. yeah yeah, I was, well, yeah, right now it's hard to play much yeah. of anywhere. Mm-hmm. If you're lucky, I guess like the night market, there's yeah. outdoor uh, events. They've been doing open mics, yeah. Yeah, so that, and and uh, what we were just talking. Uh, uh, Raging Cajun. Raging Cajun that now has open mic night on mm-hmm. Thursday, Thursday that you, when you're there, you're kind of trying out, you're doing open mic, but if they like you, they're going to hire you to come back on the weekends. Yeah. So, uh, now, I think they may be looking for cover bands for that on Friday nights. I don't remember. You had to read up on it. But yeah, there's open mics around town. Definitely, definitely. And, and, uh, what, it, when you first started playing, you know, you were pretty young, I know. Uh, was it with the intention strictly of trying to write music? I mean, usually we um, all start off with some covers. I that's was always learn. just really fascinated with how people wrote music, and I just didn't get it. I didn't understand. I was like, how the fuck do you do this? <laughs> <laughs> um and uh, I didn't think I could and then I had always loved singing and then I didn't think I could play instruments but then I started playing ukulele and then again I then I tr- didn't then tried to write music and it might I say a bit subpar <laughs> <laughs> um but then I just continued to yeah. just work on it really I don't know anybody. I know people who who learned fast, but I don't know anyone who just picked up instruments and was good and was not subpar. You have to learn. Oh yeah. That you know we all go through that learning process. Uh, so, uh, and and I see people still to this day who have played covers for years, but still are baffled by the idea of writing. Where it's like, 
Just do what sounds good and arrange it. That's right. I, I don't yeah, have any idea. You just got to try. Yeah, you just got to do it. You just got to do it, really. You just got to continue to do it until you're like, oh, wait, no, that's that's what works right. Yeah. That's what doesn't work right. Especially with lyrics. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and sometimes you you write 25 songs and none of them are any good, but you realize, ooh, that one line and that line and yeah. this line, that starts making something. Yeah. 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 I uh, remember Alex Ranson. I uh, yeah, I know you were friends with him. I played with a guy for years, and he was one, he was a great guitar player who refused to write songs. Yeah. And I kept saying he wanted to. He would talk about it. And I'd say, why don't you write a song? I'm not good enough yet. Like he thought that first song, if he waited long enough, would be perfect. No, that's you don't get. Works, yeah. Yeah, that's not yeah. how it works. You got to write a thousand really crappy songs. Yeah, you get yeah. the one that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely in the. I would mo- generally, if I didn't like it, I'd just scrap it or just leave it where it was. I have like a whole folder of just. <laughs> mo- I have a whole folder of very sh- like relatively more like two two minute songs that I wrote between like twelve and four thirteen fourteen. But I have a folder of them, which I think a handful of them I might be able to salvage and just work with a little bit. But mostly uh, all the stuff I have that I, I have like a handful of ones that I wrote when I was between 13 and 15 that I've just sprinkled into the, like a, a few of the albums, like my first two albums, I've sprinkled them into them kind of, where they're newer stuff that I've written. Because I, over the years there was like a year or two gap where I just barely wrote it all, maybe wrote two or three songs. But in the last two or three years I've written a lot because I think I've like, I have about sixty or seventy that I've written that are that I'm that are like mostly polished lyric wise and mostly polished music wise. I just naturally need to record them. Sixty <laughs> <laughs> right. so, or seventy. So what about instruments? What did you start out playing first? I start well, technically, when I was like nine, my sister. I do, I would always say I didn't know how to play piano, but I could play two songs because I was taught two songs Chopsticks. note by note. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, um, uh, green sleeves. Okay. <laughs> nice. That's and a good one. Yeah. well, actually, I knew three. The Office theme song. Oh, good. <laughs> and then a, so- a song, something that nobody's going, most people won't know, is the theme song to the spinoff show of Buffy called Angel. Okay. Which is actually weirdly complicated, and I don't know how the fuck I learned it note by note. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't know how I learned it note by note. Uh, but. I did, and I, it's all muscle memory now. I could never learn it now. I like my skill level's way below that song now nowadays, which is kind of funny. Right? Because like mm-hmm. I know that song by muscle memory, but I don't think I could ever relearn it right. if I forgot it. Compl- if my muscle memory went away or something. All right. So you tinkered around on the piano mm-hmm. when you started. Then what happened? And then when I was like twelve, I started with ukulele. Okay. And then fourteen or fifteen, I started trying guitar, and I was like, "This is I have got small hands. <laughs> this is hard." <laughs> Plus, I had a big guitar. To learn to, to learn on, so I was like, I, I'm I'm small, I'm short, I'm like five foot. It's hard. It's it was a it's I guitars are bigger. That's that's my biggest issue with guitars yeah. is that they're big. <laughs> um, and then like 16, I started. I realized that um, with piano, like I understand how chords work, and that's about it. Right. <laughs> the rest of my music is all by ear. Everything but chords yeah. is by ear, for me. So with piano, I realized, oh, I can just look up chords and play the chords with my left hand and then listen to a song, figure out the melody by ear and just figure it out with my right hand and then just play the melody along with chords. And then eventually my friend taught me how to play, just play chords with more of like a rhythm to it instead of just straightforward chords. So then I just got way more into piano than I previously was. Yeah, that's cool. Piano to me is the easiest uh, instrument to to it's use to, to learn real music theory. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's it's just so linear where right. it, it's. Uh, but I I I do like uh, playing piano because of what yeah. you said. You can just hammer out to. some chords and p- tinkle a melody, or you can start mm-hmm. you know uh, tinkling the chords out and mm-hmm. make it slightly more intricate sounding without really a whole lot of thought to it. No, which is yeah, you can just figure person. out. You can just figure out playing patterns for yeah. chords, and right. I know about two or three that I was like the first one I learned. I was like, this is hard. <laughs> <laughs> like. It, the one that sounds the bo- the best is, was the hardest, but now that I, once you get the hang of it, it's really just again muscle memory. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, absolutely. I mean, you, you're right. There's once your fingers know how to hold that position, yeah. you don't kind of forget yeah. how to hold that position, which yeah. 
is is nice because again i'm lazy yeah. <laughs> i'm yeah piano but is yeah it's really laid out and that's why it's the best for like figuring stuff out by ear because that's mostly what i what i do other than chords it's like it's hard way harder to figure out a picking pattern on guitar or ukulele by ear <laughs> right it's a lot harder to do i can do it but it's with piano as it's just straightforward set out and it's just I don't know the names of any, I don't know the names, well, I know the names of the notes. I just don't know which ones are which or where they are at all. <laughs> I don't know any theory at all, uh, like, whatsoever. <laughs> right. I like it, though, because that, that's exactly how I learned it. Like, yeah. when I, I don't think I really learned chords and stuff till I was well into my 20s. Oh, yeah. And I had been owning guitars and playing in bands, so I should have never been allowed to be in for a long time. But you just kind of, like start hearing the the pattern or whatever and going no 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 you know yeah. and, uh, and when i i remember when i did finally decide i want to learn how to really do this it confused the heck out of me yeah. i felt like I, what you were I, saying yeah. i went backwards where it's yeah. like oh man i some i don't sometimes i don't understand how a lot of people like sometimes i'm like wow yeah, some pe people try to exp like they're tr they're talking to me about something i'm like i under halfway understand what you're saying you think I know more than I do. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> like, I I can, again, naturally by ear, like, I can feel out where the, the notes are, but I don't know where they are. Right. Or which ones they are. That, you know, yeah. Playing Very by, familiar. Yeah, yeah. Playing by ear is... We call it punk rock, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> until you learn what you're doing. and then, Everything's you know. punk rock. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, uh, you had mentioned uh, in, in our talk in there, you, had, you before you said you had 70 new, 60, 70 new songs, you talked about sprinkling some of the old ones into some albums. Do you have, you actually recorded yeah, some I albums? Have, I don't have them recorded. I have, like, a handful of songs recorded. I've been working on getting them recorded. Um... I have, yeah, I have uh, probably more like, I have like 60 or 70 songs like that are finished and constructed into albums so far. Like I have gotcha. five like completely like finished, like planned out. Like the songs are finished. There's maybe one or two songs where I need to polish the instrumental a little bit more, but I'm going to do that more so like while I'm recording them and once I get to the, like I'm not going to worry about polishing them as, them as much until I actually get down to recording that set album, since right. I have, like, there, there are two that have, like, 17 songs on them each, and then I think the next one has 10, the one after that has 13, and the one after that has 10. Wow. So you've got them all planned out as mm -hmm. this, this group is an album, this group is an mm -hmm. album, and, and you just, see, this is the thing that people who don't know about music, especially, it's a little different today with computers, but right. it used to be that if you wanted to make an album, you had to talk to a record company, right. and that cost money, and those yeah. guys with the money aren't the same kind of yeah. guys as the people that make music, yeah. and they usually don't see the same, you know, in the modern day, though, you can make home mm -hmm. recordings, have you, uh, have you thought about trying uh, to do I've, that? I have or? been, one of my parents' friends, Gabe Kirkendall, uh, yep, no, has Gabe been Kirk. helping me record some of them and like been splicing them together for me, because in my, in my house, it's not, not too loud in my room, and we have... He has some decent mics and stuff, so we've been just doing like raw recordings in there. Nice. Well, that's then, always good though for mm -hmm. your writing too, because mm -hmm. you can go back and listen yeah. to them from a different perspective and analyze them a mm -hmm. little further that way. And the other thing about having all those songs ready, if you ever decide to go in the studio, it costs by the hour. So yeah. you're, you've already knocked out a lot of work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can just go in there and, and, and lay them down. So. Absolutely. Yeah. That, you know, the uh, the idea of, of the recording that many songs, because you're like, well, it's two with 17 and 10 and 13. And that is a lot of material. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, in the, like, I think from like 2018 to like 2019, I think, yeah, 2019. Whereas when I finished the first two, like put together the first two, um, which there's like a handful of old songs in both of them, but most of them are the majority of the albums are are newer were newer ones within that year or so, um, and then in the last like this year, <laughs> and I think maybe at the beginning of last year or the end of last year, I mean, and like this year is when I've written the the last three one albums, where there's I think. 
30 or so songs that I wrote in the last wow. like six months. That's a lot. Yeah, and a lot of those I, you haven't had a chance to perform out yeah. yet, right? Mm-hmm. So how much does that change your opinion on a song when you start playing it out? The response huh? you're getting, does that matter? That it much? doesn't really affect it that much. I'm mostly just focused on if I think it sounds good or not, right. really. There are songs that I know if people are going to... I generally can know if somebody if it's going to be a song that people will like or not, mm-hmm. or be a fan of or not, because I've got ones that are definitely more... Like, not as... Espe- my songs aren't especially catchy, but ones that are closer to being catchy, and then there are ones that are a little bit more indie or niche that people won't vibe with as much, right. you know, and won't... Uh, that are maybe more... The notes are more drawn out, or and it's a lot slower, or it's got a weird sound to it, where I, like, know well, not, a lot, not a lot of people will like it a lot, but I'm just a... It just kind of... The song turned out that way, and right. I, I like how it turned out. But there's definitely a few where I'm like, okay, I know that this is well constructed and I know people are going to like this song. And I like it as well. There are like a handful where I'm like, okay, these are songs that would do well technically. Right. Cool. Now you were, yeah, Dennis was talking about how once you do record, uh, or even having Gabe help record with the deal mm-hmm. yourself, it can change it. It is hard when you're playing, when you're actually physically going through it to analyze. What you think about it sometimes. Yeah, how, I, so how, how do you go about that process if you don't have recordings? I often will record it with, on my phone and listen back go. to it most of the time. Generally, if I finish once I finish a song, to make sure I don't forget the cadence, <laughs> which I don't usually, but sometimes I will write a song and I'll forget I wrote it. And I'll like, I know that I remember that I had a song with those lyrics and I'll remember the name of the song, but I won't connect them with each other. So sometimes I have songs that I forget that I like. <laughs> and then I go back and I'm like, oh, wait, I like that song. And I never play it because I don't think to go back and play it because I have such a decent amount that I do know that I know relatively well that I've written, that I've mostly memorized, that I know are good songs that I play more often. And I just forget about the, the I, I neglect some of my <laughs> songs on accident, even though I know I like them. Right. Well, with with that many songs, it would be hard to remember your repertoire without an al- an album uh, catalog to go back and look yeah. at. Because right. it, I, I, have, I have a problem remembering four. If I write a new song and I write another new song and I haven't recorded the first, and I start getting those two confused. Yeah, I can't keep it straight. The way <laughs> so. the way I write has changed a lot over the years because I have because I used to like I'd. There were two different ways I'd write. I'd either write lyrics and then figure out chords after, or I'd figure out a chord progression and then I'd write lyrics for it. But now I, it's what, and I, and whenever I'd do that, I'd always sit down and like write a whole song. Like I might polish a little bit later, but I'd sit down and write the whole thing in right. one sitting. And now I kind of like do more of like, I'll write part of it, go back to it. I, sometimes I'll sit down and write a whole song, but a lot of the time I, I'll just write some part of it finish it later, maybe splice two things together. What I've been doing lately is just, uh, sometimes I'll have a song or songs where I'm like, this is just not going to (laughs) work. I like this one line or these two lines, but this is just not going to work. And what I've been doing with those is I'm like, you know, I can just put, make a, make a poem. I've been writing poetry just because I'm like, okay, I don't want to just completely scrap these lyrics, like overall and i know i won't be able to turn it into a song so i might as well get some sort of use out of it yeah. so i've been doing that I, I always keep those ones back in a box thinking someday i'm going to go through them and find that one line that made me like all that and put it in another song but i then i never do it's just the box gets I've done it. i've done it a few times where there are a few songs where i like split both of them in half and like <laughs> switched them up <laughs> right and one of the songs com- turned into a com- like not like completely different song than the original <laughs> one com- complete about something completely different <laughs> but you never know which way it's gonna go right no well you've got a, a performance coming up even though with the the <clears throat> shutdowns of most of the uh, a lot of indoor activity there's still a little bit of a- outdoor activity going on and you're gonna be playing down in Benton, Illinois on September 5th at Framley Fest. That's a Saturday. And is this going to be the first first show for a while since things have been shut down? Yeah, because I mainly just uh, do, yeah, go to the open mic at Germania that isn't going on right now, obviously. Right. Um, I would just go to that and then just 
once in a while when somebody would be like, hey, would you like to play here? I'd be like, yeah, sure. Right, That's just right. kind of how I've been yeah. doing things. All right, not not so much out trying to push just whatever mm -hmm. lands in your lap you take. Yeah, that's basically Absolutely. what I've done. Awesome. Well, looking forward to seeing you play. It's been a while, uh, I guess. Last time I saw you, you was in a little band get up, and that's been, I guess, 2018. No, what am I saying? I saw you at Bush Fire. Trinity River Fest. I I, I, get, I see so much stuff. I get a little <laughs> confused in my mind. It's all one big hodgepodge. Uh, but we yeah we do have you on the Trinity River Fest movie, movie yeah. uh, which is on YouTube, which was the the very first Trinity River Fest. The entire yeah. movie is uh, Dennis and Alex made, uh, which is a good performance there. And uh, like I say, looking forward to seeing you uh, playing again uh, coming up September fifth. Just. Uh, down the road, a piece <laughs> in Benton, Illinois. Uh, not that far. Everybody get out. It's it's going to be a good time. Uh, a big venue where people can socially distance, which, uh, you know, a social distance dance floor. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. I heard it was true. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so you uh, if, if people do want to see what, all, what we're talking about, other than Suki, if you heard the first part of the interview about Suki, there's nothing about Suki on the website probably, but you have a YouTube channel with, uh, with a lot of your songs. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, got, I've only got a couple uploads. I've only got maybe like 10 or so uploaded on there. Only 10. You were slacking. You're like, I don't have 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the uh, Metal Sisters on YouTube, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and your sister's name is Meadow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so your YouTube channel is Meadow Sister, mm -hmm. and then also your Instagram is Meadow Dot Sister. Mm -hmm. So if people want to check out Autumn Conkle, that it would be the easiest way to go about it. Uh, YouTube Meadow Sister M E A D O W S I S T E R Meadow Sister, and uh, if you if you really want to see it. Because as we talked, we had the sound bath lady in, mm -hmm. and we were just talking about with her right before this, there's nothing that beats live vibrations. Right. Vibration is what it's all about. And so you can YouTube it, and it'll be fun. But if you get out and see the live thing, that's when you feel the vibrations. How does Suki feel about your music? Um, I don't know. She just, <laughs> she just chills, you know. She sit on your shoulder they, uh, when you play? Uh, not usually. Yeah. Uh, but she... I. I haven't really played much with like around her because I uh, when I first got her I had like read stuff about I, I hadn't read as much about her as I have now and my friend also used to have bearded dragons so talking to her about it has gotten me I um, they've they've got really good hearing so I, tr I at first I was like okay I won't don't I want to make sure I'm not stressing her out by too much noise right. at least when I first got her because I've only had her for a month or so so I've been trying to keep it a little bit quieter in my room just to make sure she isn't stressed out she just to feel out how how much sound she's comfortable with and stuff like that. Right. Um, recently, I've been like just playing like I have like a record player and I've been playing like a couple albums just a, like around her to see how she reacts to just to see if she's chill with what volumes and stuff. Interesting. Well, I figure there's some vibrations going there, and mm -hmm. uh, you know she likes your vibrations, so maybe the two go together, and uh, Suki can perform with you. <laughs> Hang out. I want to see Suki <laughs> with a kazoo in her mouth. Well, that'd be amazing. <laughs> I don't know, doing some circus music for some reason. I don't know why that's in my head. Uh, so, uh, awesome, man. Well, I like Suki. Yeah, the, the, the leather, the little leather jacket on Suki's just. I, I, everyone who's wa who's listening on the radio, you're going to have to go to cottonmouth.org YouTube channel. Watch the the YouTube video so you can see Suki in in Suki's leather jacket. I, I'm just now now I'm picturing Suki instead of a Pearson's Market buying vegetables on a motorcycle with a s joint hanging out of his mouth. Mm. <laughs> Lizards ride. I don't know. <laughs> the bearded. You dragons. don't know. Yeah, I don't know anything. <laughs> I, I'll, I'm going to shut up now. I've, I don't even know what I'm talking about. You want you want to take over, please? Because <laughs> I I don't know what I where I am, even am anymore. What What do you want me to take over and do? I'm not I, sure what my you're whole doing. Life, I'm I the oh whole life. man! I've wrecked my whole life. If you can no. just take over my finances and I got bills I can't. Pay. I wasn't planning on this, so I'm going to have to pass. <sighs> Maybe Suki's available to uh, help Suki? your life along. I don't know. Let me out, Suki. There's probably a fee involved. I mean, you know. 
So <laughs> Suki's got a little a little checkbook in that leather jacket. She's like, I got your bills, man. I got the bills, no problem. No, I don't know Suki smokes. I don't, I don't know why I'm making Suki smoke all of a sudden. My mind plays as weird things going on. Uh, Autumn Conkle is our guest, not Suki. Suki is the bearded dragon riding on Autumn Conkle's uh, shoulder. Uh, Autumn is going to get some albums out to you guys real soon. We're going to keep you in touch with her. <laughs> soon. We, I, I, I left it vague. Real soon. <laughs> I mean, I, I tried, I used the word real to put some sort of, you know, like it's going to happen soon. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, Autumn's going to get her, her, uh, her 115 songs recorded real soon. Two albums with 17, one with 10, one with 30. I don't remember the numbers. Uh, Maybe we can get Autumn a sponsor to pay for it all. That's what we need. That'll get her motivated. See? I, I know a lizard store. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> The right, tie-dyed the tie-dyed iguana. iguana. <laughs> the tie-dyed iguana. I'm not sure that's even there anymore, but I, I don't know either. To be honest, but it's a great I, name. Great name. So anyway, well, thank you so much for coming down and sharing with us about your musical journey. Uh, I and I know, like like I say, I saw you play when you were just a little girl and was uh, really uh, taken by your your style and you're just kind of. I'm. I wrote these songs and I don't even care. Yeah. Kind of attitude. That is a cool <laughs> thing about you. A very punk rock attitude with this cute little voice playing a ukulele. ukulele. Yeah. <laughs> it just came across really so cool. awesome. Uh, Made so. it totally original, so yeah. Yes, yes. Iris Dement. There's the name I couldn't come up with. You were the first time I heard you sing, I, I, that's who I thought of. Is I don't know if you've ever listened to Iris Dement sing. I don't think so. Oh, she's, uh, she's just, I, I love her singing. Anyway. Uh, thanks so much for uh, for coming down. Thanks for bringing Suki and tell, and teaching us about bearded dragons. I, I I very much had a feeling the first half of the show was like Johnny Carson having Jack. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean it was it had that sort of feel to it. So tell us what do bearded dragons eat? All right. Well, no stupid pet trick, so. <laughs> Except, That's you know, what we need. Cause Some stupid. Suki's too smart for that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Super Dave Osborne. All right. I, I no, no, no. That was David Letterman. You're getting your days mixed up. <laughs> and by the way. <laughs> did I didn't say Super Dave Osborne. You did. I, and, I'm sorry. And <laughs> Dave's not here anyways, so just forget it. Big Pen, this uh, show is over. Yeah. Thanks to uh, Halpin Music Company <laughs> and to Mr. Matt Van Voor, some Theus Insurance, and, and thanks Autumn Conkle for coming in and putting yeah. up with your Uncle Pig Pen. <laughs> And uh, check out Metal Sisters on Instagram yes. and YouTube. Absolutely. And don't forget to get out and support local music and art. 